This week marks the 50th anniversary of one of the biggest moments in both the U.S. and our city's history. The moment man first walked on the moon. That monumental achievement was guided by a Houston team right here in Houston's Mission Control. All this week, we've got special coverage of the folks on the front lines of the Apollo era. In today's Sunday conversation, I had the privilege of sitting down with Apollo 15 astronaut Al Warden and his daughter Allison to talk everything from Apollo 11 anniversary to his own record-setting mission to even aliens. It was pretty amazing. That is probably the one time in recorded history when the whole world came together. All of them. Billions of people watched that Apollo 11 landing. The angle has landed. It's so amazing today to think that 50 years ago, a small group of us did something like that. What about you? What was it like for you? How old were you? Well, I was when little. You were very little. Do you remember? So um, I'm going to say I was about six when he got selected for the program and we moved to Nassau Bay. And I was 11 when he flew on Apollo 15. And the first question that I feel like people always ask me is, were you scared when your dad went to the moon? You know, did that just scare you to death? And my honest reaction is, we were so happy for him and so relieved and so excited and so proud. And I think, you know, they say children are sensitive to their parents' emotions. So he wasn't scared. We weren't scared. We were super happy for him because it was a very competitive situation. And a lot of people trained a long time and never got to go. So um, that really, I mean, even at that age, I just remember being so relieved and so happy and, and grateful. And excited, yeah, I'm yeah sure. excited. Now that all this time has gone by, we focus more, I think, on those who walk on the moon than those who go into orbit. Uh, and I think that's just a media and a, and a public perception of, of what it was all about. It's pretty neat to say, yeah, I walked on the moon. It's not so neat to say, oh, well, I went around it 75 times. Um, th there's, a little, there's a little disconnect there somewhere. Uh, but that's okay, because back in the day, I was in the right slot. Talk about that. You, you've got the world record, the Guinness Book of World Records. 75 orbits, yeah. Saw the Earth rise 75 that. times. Wow. Yeah. It's, amazing. it's pretty amazing. You can cover it with your thumb from out there. It's, uh, it's a little bigger than the moon but from here, but not much. Uh, so you can put your thumb out there and just cover the Earth with your thumb. We live as part of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy contains some 400 billion stars. Billion. And the latest count on the numbers of galaxies out there is another 200 billion galaxies out there. And that's only as far as we can see. It makes me think that uh, the purpose of the space program is to find another place to live. Someday we can't live here. The sun's going to burn up someday. So we're going to have to go somewhere else. What are your thoughts on life outside of Earth? What do you think about Well, that? I have to tell you a little story. I have been asked... A thousand times, do you believe in UFOs? And I say, no, I don't. Uh, I said, I could be convinced that a UFO could be a KFO, a known foreign object. If you bring me a piece of one and I can analyze it and I find out that it's a material that's not here on Earth, okay, then, then I'll start to believe. Next question is, do you believe in aliens? And I say, yeah, I do. I believe in aliens. Have you ever seen one? Sure, I've seen them, see them all the time. Where do you see an alien? I see every time I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, I see an alien. Because <laughs> I'm not at all convinced that we didn't come from somewhere else. Wow. And I see nothing illogical about that at all. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hmm? What were you thinking when you were listening to... I wish I was there. <laughs> I would have gladly traded places with either one of them. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was that, I got to tell you, that was such a monumental time that I don't think we will ever, ever appreciate just how important it was.
even with all of the celebrations and the 50th coming up and, and all the talk about what we did 50 years ago and all that, I'm just not sure we, even today, give it the right emphasis, uh, the right uh, the right honor that it, that it deserves. Because I think there are very few people who really understand how dangerous and how, um, what do I want to say, um, challenging it was. And Neil had to do it manually because his computer was giving him some bad information. So he had to take over manually and land it. Uh, absolutely amazing. He was the right guy. I mean, he was pretty cool. Al Warden was pretty cool, too. During his mission, Warden photographed about 25% of the moon for NASA. He's since become an author, publishing a poetry book and children's book, as well as his autobiography titled Falling to Earth. He is now writing the foreword for a book being released about his friend, Neil Armstrong. And during our interview, Allison, his daughter Allison there, shared some of her most special mementos from her dad's Apollo days. We've posted that portion of my interview on our website, clicktohouston.com slash Sunday. After this interview, I, I couldn't stop thinking about the moon. Honestly, I would just stand outside this past week and just look at the moon and think, wow, we're up there. We're all he doing it. He was around it more than 75 times orbiting in space. It was a fascinating time as the world stopped and watched. We've seen video of it, and all of us were doing that watching. Yeah. Black and white in my house. Sorry, I didn't have color at that time. But it was amazing watching all that happen. Incredible. And that's why it's nice to relive it right now. Yeah.